It is Thursday, June 25th. I'm Sam Cedar. And I'm Lucy Steiner. Which one of these stories will you be talking about today? Coronavirus surges around the United States as the country reaps the consequences of Donald Trump's policy of denial. Republicans at all levels seem determined to expose the public to unnecessary harm. Meanwhile, Trump's steamrolling of the judiciary continues with a party-line vote favoring Republicans in the U.S. Senate. But the House hears testimony that could spell bad news for Attorney General Bill Barr. And lastly, state attorney generals push back on the power of big money. In California, Uber and Lyft may be forced to treat their so-called independent contractors like full, actual employees. You're listening to Majority.fm's AM Quickie. And these are the stories you need to know. Trump may be in physical and mental decline, but he still has great power over matters of life and death for the entire planet. Yesterday, a Department of Health and Human Services spokesperson told NBC News that Trump plans to end federal funding for coronavirus testing around the country. It's not easy in many cities to get tested, which is a problem because testing is most effective in a limited window of time after exposure to the virus. This week, there were no appointments available at any of the 40 testing sites in Los Angeles, this according to the L.A. Times. Some sites were closed. Trump's policy of denialism guarantees that the pandemic will get worse and worse. Let's be clear. He owns this. As he recounted to all 6,000 people who showed up to his hate rally in Tulsa, quote, I said to my people, slow the testing down, please, end quote. May he choke on his own swab. Record case numbers were reported in at least five states. Nationwide yesterday saw a record one-day surge in new COVID-19 cases. Texas is enduring what Republican Governor Greg Abbott called a massive outbreak. And Houston's Director of Emergency Medical Services told reporters their infrastructure was overwhelmed. The governors of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut announced a mandatory quarantine for visitors from nine other states where coronavirus was spreading out of control. According to the Philadelphia Inquirer, over the last two weeks, cases have risen by 84 percent in states that don't require masks. But in states with mask orders, cases actually fell by 25 percent. Washington State Governor Jay Inslee yesterday announced a statewide mask order. It was immediately undermined by a right-wing county sheriff who went on TV news and told people not to act like sheep. That pretty much sums up where we're at with this pandemic. Who, ladies and gentlemen, is the real sheeple? Someone who acts with care and concern for their neighbors or someone who denies all reality because their precious leader told them to. Assistant U.S. Attorney Aaron Zelensky testified to the House Judiciary Committee yesterday and, as expected, said he'd been pressured to give Roger Stone a break because Stone is friends with Trump. Zelensky, who remains a federal prosecutor in Maryland, made Attorney General Bill Barr look even more corrupt than was previously evident. But until Barr can be impeached or otherwise removed, Trump continues to rack up wins within the judicial branch. Yesterday, the Senate confirmed Trump's 200th judicial nominee. Corey Wilson of Mississippi has joined the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals for life. These federal judgeships are, of course, lifetime appointments. On a largely party-line vote of 52 to 48, the Republican-led chamber approved the nomination of Corey Wilson of Mississippi to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fifth Circuit. This new judge is another career Republican hack who called President Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act both illegitimate and perverse. Also yesterday, the U.S. Court of Appeals for Washington, D.C. overruled Judge Emmett Sullivan in the case against Trump advisor Michael Flynn. Sullivan had decided the case against Flynn must continue despite Bill Barr's decision to drop it. But a three-judge panel on the appeals court said Sullivan did not have that power as a judge. Sullivan will appeal that ruling to the full circuit court. Majority.fm's AM Quickie is fueled by JustCoffee.coop. Just Coffee is a worker-owned coffee roaster based in Madison, Wisconsin that has sponsored the Majority Report for nearly a decade. Check out their collection of fair trade roasts, including our own Majority Report blend. And regardless of what you order, receive 10% off your order when you use the code MAJORITY at checkout. And all shipping is free. That's coupon code MAJORITY at JustCoffee.coop. There were a few victories in the struggle against greedy corporations yesterday. California Attorney General Javier Becerra filed for a judicial injunction against Uber and Lyft to immediately halt the unlawful misclassification of their drivers as independent contractors. Per a press release, the California AG was joined in the motion against the companies by the city attorneys of Los Angeles, San Diego, and San Francisco. 
Their lawsuit says the gig economy giants are depriving workers of, quote, critical workplace protections, such as the right to a minimum wage and overtime and access to paid sick leave, disability insurance, and unemployment insurance. Misclassification often results in workers being significantly more likely to draw on government-funded income supports to make ends meet, leaving taxpayers to foot the bill in lieu of big business, end quote. In Minnesota, A.G. Keith Ellison sued ExxonMobil, three companies owned by the Koch family, and an oil industry trade group for lying to the public and the government about climate change. And Germany's Bayer Corporation, which owns Monsanto, agreed to a $10.9 billion settlement over the cancer-causing chemicals in Roundup, the widely available weed killer. That was owing to a class action lawsuit filed against the companies in California. And now for some quicker cookies. Quicker quickie. Prosecutors in The Hague indicted the president of Kosovo, Hashim Thatchi, on war crimes yesterday for his role in a campaign of murder and torture. Nearly 100 victims were claiming in the indictment that named nine other commanders in the Kosovo Liberation Army. Thatchi canceled his imminent visit to the White House, which he was traveling to when the news was announced. A grand jury in the state of Georgia indicted three white men for the killing of Ahmad Arbery, who they chased and shot down for jogging while black. In Oregon, the self-proclaimed foot soldier for Hitler, Jeremy Christian, was sentenced to two life terms without parole. Christian killed two men and injured a third who rose to defend two black women he was harassing on a train. The survivor of Christian's attack, Mika Fletcher, said he hoped Christian would spend the rest of his life in jail, but still hopefully benefit from therapy. Bank of America analyst named Kamal Sharma called the British pound, quote, an emerging market currency in all but name. This is the bank's way of saying right-wing austerity policies combined with pandemic denialism and the rejection of international agreements has put the former imperial power in the same place as one of its former colonies. Blimey. Lastly, a great plume of dust from the Sahara Desert is blanketing the globe causing severe air quality problems in the Caribbean. The dust plume, kicked up by powerful storms over Central and Western Africa, should hit the southeastern U.S. today, beginning with Texas. It's another good reason to mask up. Quicker, quickie. They join us later this afternoon for the Majority Report live at noon and later as a podcast. 